Got a nice little goodie bag. I brought the fam. Every time I come down, I gotta always make sure to bring them some presents. They love t-shirts, but they're always psyched on anything. That's why I love to bring stuff, because I like to see them get all happy and stuff. <laughs> What's up, Sasha? <gasps> Brooke, back, come get your dog. She about to attack us. Hey. Sasha! 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 Go in the house. I don't want to be bothered by you. Go, go. <laughs> What's up, hey, brother? How you doing, man? Sorry, I brought the whole the camera. Hey, it's all right, man. Welcome. Good to see you, man. Love you, love you too, brother. Good to see you, man. Come on, let's go outside. Hey. My mom and uh, my wife uh, got me that for my birthday uh, about a week ago, so I'm just testing it out. You know, I like to cook, so. Yeah. Upgrade the smoker to this one, though. This one is uh, Chef Brooke Tucker. We're gonna do uh, cook some good food with this guy. You guys are going in, huh? That's for sure. You're going in. Yeah. Check that out, dude. That's how you do it right there. Yeah, close this up, though. You're holding it down, though. You got the grill and everything back here. Yeah. Well, so, what time does mom get off? Seven? She's off at seven, yeah. yeah. Yeah, you guys gonna stay tonight? Yeah. Yeah, we need to visit. We gotta go to the smoothie shop. Let's visit it. It's right down the street. You know what? What time is it? Six. We can go right now. Let's go right now. We're in the van, parked just right on the rocks right here to the left where we always park. So okay. we'll just follow back you. Out. I was skating, you know, in the mid early 90s, and uh, you know, Nicholas was probably three, two, three years old when I when I was skateboarding, and I and I wasn't skating, you know, doing all the stuff he was doing. I was mostly skating just for fun and for transportation reasons, you know. And I believe one of his friends that on his street introduced him to skateboarding, and then they started skating. As far as I can remember, every time I came over, he was gone. In Carlsbad, in LA, in Encinitas, you know, in Chula Vista at the skate park, just being with the right people and really hungry and just doing what he wanted to do. So what do you like to do for fun, Nicholas? Doing stuff. Yeah. Nicholas was born in San Diego, December 29, 1990. Um, we were living on with his father and Oriole Street in San Diego. And then we moved to another place that his father owned. And then we moved to another place on 37th Street, which is where he um, started his skateboarding career, I guess. <laughs> I really didn't have any problems with him. Unlike his brother. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> bearings, right? <laughs> Do a trick, Mom. Oh, what's it say? Oh, that's what they're for. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> You know what, I just don't know why he started skating. It was just like something he saw and he just started doing it. And then the first actual skateboard came from this friend of his that he was selling a skateboard for like five bucks. And for four days and four nights, we went to this kid's house trying to find him and we couldn't get a hold of him. So finally on the fourth night, we finally got a hold of him. We got this board and he was so happy. <laughs> I used to live right in here. This is like where I started skating. I first picked up a board on this block. What's up, guys? Just doing a documentary. I skateboard, and uh, I used to live right here, actually. Yeah. Lisa Tucker. What's up, man? Nick. Nice to meet you. Hey, what's up, man? Nick. Good to meet you. Sorry to blow up your spot. We oh, just man. wanted to yeah, shed some light on the old apartment. But yeah, man, we used to skate all up and down this block right here. All of our friend, my best friend, used to live in that house over there. So he would come over. And my other, my other friend, Sanat, he lives over there. I don't know if he still lives there, but uh, yeah, we all would just get together and skate on the block. Come on, Sanat, come out! Sanat! Sanat still is there. There's one of the friends that we grew up with skateboarding. He still lives there. Dude, a long time. Let's we'll see. Ah, when was the last time fuck, we, we seen each other? You still exactly the same, fuck. bro. You remember, though? We used to fucking skate All right day, there they, on the they, corner they right here. The street right here. I know. Was it, was it more, uh, it was more rough back then, huh? Yeah. They repaved it and everything. It was everything. still sick. Yeah. You'd bring the box out and the rail. 
You're like this small. <laughs> look, look, look at that, man. Damn, you outdo it. Dude, good to see you, man. Man. Ah, this is Congratulations. Crazy. SD represent yeah. right here. Hell yeah. <laughs> this area, the east side of San Diego, is very gang affiliated, or it was. My brother knew a bunch of gangsters and like hung around with different groups of people, and so they were all obviously good friends, and I was his young brother skating. And so they always looked out for me, like me and my friends would be skating in the street and they would, in a sense, kind of like protect us, like guardian, guardian gangsters. <laughs> At that time, you know, we were, we were poor, we were, you know, we didn't have a lot, but you know, my mom did the best she could and she really loved us and gave us everything that she could, you know. And his dad is a really good guy too and, and he did everything he could even though they weren't together, him and my mom. And he would go see him on the weekend, and we'd go camp, and we'd do things, you know. But Nicholas was, you know, he, he was, for a little bit, he was angry, you know, for a couple years. And I was doing my own thing, so I wasn't really, could be there around, for, you know, to deal with him on that that level, because I was already kind of transitioning out the pad. But You know, I just didn't really pick it up that it was because of the situation. But one day he just stopped being angry. Maybe it had to do with skateboarding, I don't know. But there was a time when he, he was so mad at this one friend of mine that he took some batteries, you know, double A batteries, and the guy was leaving, he threw the batteries at the guy. <laughs> and to this day, the guy still talks about that. <laughs> we used to do these demos, and more like skate jams, where we'd set up some obstacles, and uh, everybody would just come out and skate. And um, Nick was there with some of his friends. I think he was like 13 or 14 years old at the time, and a little kid. He just had like a really easy style. Like, didn't look like he was really putting much effort. So um, at the end of the demo, I went up to him and just told him who I was and to uh, come into the shop you know, in the week and I wanted to talk to him about it. So the very next day he showed up with his mom. Uh, ever since then it's just been steady progression. And that was the best thing, Nicholas was happy just to get the free boards, you know. And I was glad too, you know. <laughs> At the time, our um, shop team consisted of like Callan, James, and Laurel Gray, Lenny Rebus, um, Jimmy Carlin was on. So, and all those kids were just starting to get into board companies. So Nick just kind of linked up with those guys, and yeah, I mean it was a good time in skateboarding for San Diego. I just thought he was a little kid, tiny little kid, big afro. Yeah, I would just give him stuff because I knew he needed it. Yeah. You know, I don't think it was like, dude, you ride for us. It was just like, hey man, here's some stuff because. I could tell he was cool, a fucking nice, good kid. I don't know, it was just a, it was like a long-term thing with Nick. I always thought that right away. Like, this kid's gonna be around a long time. And like, it wasn't like he was, you know, back nose bunning handrails and all that crazy, but the amount of comfort he had on a skateboard, like his stability was so quick compared to, sometimes you see kids that have been skating five years and they might front feeble rail or do whatever, but they just look busted. They don't look like they have control. And for an older guy that does team management, you're not that psyched on that, you're just not. Tricks don't really mean much because we've seen it all forever. You know, he was just a good kid. I taught Nick from the time he was 12 or 13 until 16, maybe 17, yeah. I saw a lot of avoidance, and so I questioned with, like, how can you really be spending 12 hours a day skateboarding? Like, is this really happening? You know? So I did. I would, like, question him, like, who are you hanging out with? Where are you really? And he would just be like, no, I'm just skating. And I'm like, tell me more about that. Like, where, <laughs> which streets are you on? Where are you, like, I didn't, I'm not from the, that world, so I didn't know. I thought, honestly, like, in the neighborhood that he was growing up in, um, I thought he had a lot of challenges. Most of the students that I had in that neighborhood wouldn't even take their books home with them because they'd get jumped. So with him skating, I, want, I hoped that it was like a positive thing, but because he, there was all of this not participation in school, I, I think I was always just questioning and wondering, like hoping that he wasn't like into something not good for him. Awesome, thank you. Dude, this place has changed so much. Oh no. They don't even have a mini ramp all set up anymore. I know you have a little hubba down there. So this is like the mini ramp zone right here. This came later on. Uh, in the Chula Park era. Um, that wasn't always there. 
But once it once it was built and everything, it was a lot of fun. We had a lot of fun in this little zone right here. We would get the night sessions cracking. Cause I would stay at your house and we would skate and then you would always drive us over here. Yep. Me and a few of our friends, um, we'd all pile into his car and get a session. How you doing? You used to skate here when I was young too, about your age. I want to my shoes and my board. Yeah, whatever you want. That's awesome, you guys are skating here. Can you give her a year, please? Yeah, let me get this real quick. You know, he was my baby, you know? <laughs> But they looked out for him, and they always looked out for him. Peter, he would go skating with Peter Smalling and the, the crew, and I knew they were okay, you know, I'd check in. They always took care of him, made sure he got home. And it was just me and him, you know. And then he left me. Yeah, he's like, I gotta go, because that's where, you know, skateboarding is at. And if I want to, you know, make a go of it and have a career, that's where I gotta go. So I go, okay, you know. When we first put him on, he was such a little kid, and, uh, like, everything was so new. I think that he was just kind of overexposed to a lot of stuff. Um, but yeah, as he moved out of San Diego and moved up to LA is when it really changed for him. A lot of people from our neighborhood um, didn't make it out of there. You know, a lot of them are dead or in jail or, you know, not doing good, struggling, you know. And some people, like my brother, you know, wanted more and wanted to um, better their lives. And yeah, it just started to snowball and pick up momentum. Got some parts, got on Skate Mafia. Next thing I know, he's gonna move to LA. Next thing I know, he knows all these pros in LA, and he's, next thing I know, he's in the van with Paul Rodriguez, and next thing I know, he's gonna be pulled up to Primitive. I was at the car wash the other day, and the, the guy driving my car had a, a Primitive skateboard t-shirt on. I say, do you know who Nick Tucker is? He said, oh yeah, Nick Tucker, he's the bomb, man. Oh yeah, I know he is. I just said, you know what, I'm his dad. And the guy looked at me like, what, no way. It's a long story, but we lost track of each other for a significant period. So for probably almost 10 years, I had almost no contact with him. Like in 2010, he invited me to go see him skateboard at uh, Del Mar Fairgrounds. So that was the first time I seen him skate, and I thought, wow, this dude's pretty good, man. So from then on, that's kind of what started our relationship again. And ever since then, it's, uh, I see him more and more and more often until today, it's like we're never disconnected. In my opinion, I think we have a greater love for each other since we went through such a crazy time, all that stuff happening. You know, I really thought, oh, he'll go up there for a little while and come back home. And I don't know what I thought he was gonna do after that, but you know, just never thought that this is something that could be a career and, and turn out the way it has, you know? But I'm so glad it has, cause you know, I don't know what he would have done, you know? <laughs> cause this is what he, did for so many years, you know. I don't know if he would have thought of anything else, you know. The day he gave me his uh, first skateboard, is like, damn, man, is uh, I, I almost cried. I, I, I probably did. I had to hold it in. I was so proud, and so I knew then that he. That's when you know you made it, and he's just kept on going. I mean, I can't keep up with the skateboards he has. I have all these skateboards, but that's probably what a, a half, a, a third of them. Uh, we have to build me a bigger garage because I don't have enough space to put them on now. It's a lot of pressure to, to put you know everything you have into something and to really like make it stand out in this day and age, where there's literally video parts posted every single day. And granted, there's like it's not by like all professionals or whatever, but it's like there's a lot of good skaters out there that you can now have access to because of the internet, you know, and it's every day. It's not like, all right, in six months there'll be a new batch. No, it's every single day some, somebody somewhere in the world is putting out a video part. So when you say, hey, you have nine, ten months to film a part, it's not that easy. It's a lot of pressure. And again, oh, boo-hoo, you're pro Like, I know that those are going to be the comments, but that's the truth. Like, like people that aren't in those positions, they, don't, they can't even begin to understand the pressure. The next Nick Tucker is all around us, you know? We're all, we're all Nick Tuckers, man. We're all coming from that, that journey, you know? It's a motivation, it's an inspiration, you know? That's the way I, I, look, I view my brother, you know? And that's the whole point, that any of this can happen to anybody if you work hard enough in the right doors and you align yourself the right way.